Man, it's been hot these past couple days. We were processing chickens and it hit like, I don't know, 35 degrees in the morning and we just had to shut her down. So to this morning, we're gonna be continuing with uh, processing chickens and I'm gonna show you how we do it on our homestead uh, without all the fancy gadgets and, and tools that uh, you see a lot of people have nowadays uh, with their stainless steel uh, pluckers and uh, their um, drenchers to uh, make sure you can get the feathers off easily. I'm not gonna be plucking the feathers today. I will be skinning the chicken that way uh, the feathers uh, and the skin we don't have on the chicken because first off the skin is the worst part of the chicken so we don't eat the skin and it also makes it easier and a lot more efficient to uh, process the chicken. So you're gonna need a couple things right off the bat. You're gonna need a couple sharp knives. I have a uh, filleting knife that I just finished sharpening um, with a stone here uh, that I use. It's a thousand grit and a six thousand on top. So I sharpen that stone down. I also have a, um, a butchering knife here that I uh, was using earlier uh, or the other day when I was uh, processing chickens and what I use this one for is to cut through bone and I was halving the chickens, the legs from the breast. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing that today. I gotta check with Kimberly and see how many she wants full. And you're also gonna want some uh, scissors and these scissors I use are really heavy duty. Uh, these are for clipping off the tips of the wings because there's nothing to them on that. Uh, on this side here, I have a garbage can uh, that I will be uh, throwing all the scraps from the chicken and bleeding them out in. Uh, I have a, a log here that I put two nails in. The nails are probably about an inch and a half to two inch apart. And that's where I put the uh, chicken's head in. And uh, we're just gonna be using a good old ax. Um, this is how I've done it from, uh, from a child and I know some people like to slit the throats in a cone. Again, we don't have the fancy cones uh, that a lot of them have out there and I find this a lot more um, efficient and painless for the chicken because just bleeding them out by slicing their throat, I don't know, I just still feel that there's a, uh, uh, a feeling to the chicken when they're getting drained out. Now I don't know, but this is the way I do. I just take the head right off and drain it or drain it in there and then start processing from there. Also, what you're gonna need is a bucket of water here that once you process the chicken, that you can toss it into cool water. And you're also gonna want constant flowing water. That way you can clean off your table as you're processing the chickens, in between chickens, rinsing off the chicken and the feathers and all that jazz. So you're always gonna want plenty of water, so keep that on hand. Let's get into this now. All right, so I like to grab the chicken by its feet like that. It kind of tames them down a little bit. And that one, obviously, this one's uh, a poor example, but uh, typically they um, settle down like this and they become a little bit more docile. Um, when I was doing these chickens the uh, other day, we were averaging about five pounds of chicken that's fully dressed and that's at seven weeks. So these ones might be a little bit more uh, just because uh, they, I've had them uh, feeding for a couple extra days and uh, we'll see today. So now he's gonna go onto the butcher block and uh, we're gonna drain them and then we're gonna put them on the table and uh, start processing them. So here we go. Go Roxy, go. Okay, so now I've got the uh, chicken completely bled out and that takes about two to three minutes depending on uh, how long the organs keep on going in there. But you'll notice the uh, chicken go limp and then there will be no more blood and then you're pretty much ready to go. Um, 
Yes, this is a little bit of a uh, disturbing video, but uh, this is real life homestead. This is not uh, your uh, go to the grocery store and pick up your food. This is what you got to do on a homestead uh, to survive. So the first thing I like to do is grab my scissors and I like to take off the wing tips. So all you do is cut those off with your scissors because there's nothing to the wing tips, right? So those can go right into the bin. Now the next thing you want to do is uh, deal with the legs. And uh, I got Roxy here and Tank sitting behind here just waiting for these feet. Uh, dogs totally love these uh, things so I do give them um, a bit of uh, a treat once in a while but I don't overdo them because they'll just just eat until they throw up so uh, what you want to do is um, there's a joint right here on the leg some people like to bend the leg the other way but I like to bend it the way it's supposed to and you'll feel a little uh, little cave in there and that's where you'll want to cut so once you cut it there you'll go right through the cart cartilage and cut it off clean like that you want that Roxy no tank you want that there you go tank will like that and then same with the other leg completely off there's uh, no bone to go through, it's completely cart cartilage. Uh, the bone starts uh, below and above that joint that you cut. So here's another treat for them. You want that? No? Okay. So she doesn't want that, it is what it is. So now what you're gonna do is start skinning the uh, chicken. So typically what you wanna do is after you bleed out the chicken uh, on a normal process, you wanna keep the legs on and what you'll do is put it in hot wa water. I believe it's 150 degrees uh, that you'll want the water at, but we're not doing that because uh, we're not saving the skin. So what you do is right at the belly of the uh, chicken, you're gonna make a little slice like that, exposing all the breast. And then what I like to do is run my knife right through right to the top. And what you wanna do also is take off any of that connecting tissue and uh, so that it uh, comes apart nice and easy. And then you can do the same on here. You take off all that connective tissue and you expose the breast. Now this is where it gets a little bit uh, uh, savage is you basically have to uh, pull off the skin all together uh, that comes in bits and pieces but uh, this is a lot quicker and uh, a lot healthier to eat than when you have the uh, skin on and you, you gotta pluck it all. So to get the feet up I'll uh, reach into the leg and I'll pull down above that leg that I just cut. and it comes right off. So you have one whole leg exposed there and then same on the other side. Some of the tissue is really on there really well so you'll have to uh, kind of get your fingers in there and, uh, and uh, just pull. So there you go. Now you got two legs exposed. Um, what I like to do now is work this top part over where the neck was. and then over onto the wings. So once you got the neck exposed there, you keep on working it through over the wings. And sometimes this doesn't come off in one piece. This one is kind of uh, working out very well for me today. Uh, must be the first one. I guess I'll have it be more interesting on the next ones. So you got one wing out there. So what I like to do is take my fillet knife and cut that skin off there. And then I don't have the feathers on there either. Um, and then you work the other side off. As well, that one didn't come off as easy, so you just give it another little pull. And then what you do is you work it all the way back down and under. And uh, that's basically as far as you get there. Now you're gonna get the knife involved and start cutting all everything out. I'll throw all that out. So now what I'll do is I'll start at the wings 
and I'll cut the wing off. in all the skin as well. So that's one clean wing right there. And then you're gonna go on to the other one. Flip it over maybe this way. And it's important, like I said at the beginning of the video, to uh, have a nice sharp knife because uh, the feathers here will dull up the knife really quick. So. Make sure you sharpen it before, um, not every chicken, but every time you start a process of chickens, it's good to sharpen your knife. So once you get those off, toss them out. Now you're gonna get to the tail here. So the tail here has uh, a little uh, sack that you gotta cut out. So you cut that sack out. Then you can flip over the chicken, cut the sack out on this side here. And then you have a pretty clean chicken there. Clean that out. Now is where the water comes in. You wanna give this a good clean. If you don't clean it off well, you're gonna have to deal with all the extra feathers that are kicking around. And uh, it just makes the process a little easier. So now once you uh, rinsed off your chicken, you can uh, either start at the, uh, the bottom of them or at the top. I prefer the top, that way I can cut out the neck and the crop and the esophagus. And so when I pull out the uh, intestines and everything else, that I'm not pulling that crop out. It, the crop should be uh, pretty empty because I, like I said, it's been about 12 to 16 hours since I've uh, fed these chickens and they've only had water. So there shouldn't be much of a crop left. Uh, and then I pull out the neck. You can keep the neck for stews and things like that, but I like to keep them for the dog treats. It's a uh, personal preference really. So we'll start up at the neck. And what you'll do is you'll make incisions on either side of the neck. and you'll cut out the esophagus and the crop that's right there. And if you're gonna be going through a little bit of bone, it's good to use your uh, butcher knife. This one's giving me a little bit of a difficulty, so I'll just get the scissors in. So that's your neck. Uh, the dogs really love these as well. There you go, Tank. There you go, he loves that. So now that you've uh, taken off the neck and uh, the esophagus is out there, the crop was in there, I should have showed you, but it is what it is. You work on the back end. So you're gonna get your knife again and you're gonna start cutting around the sack or the vent. And then down the sides here, the, down the rib cage or what is the rib cage? Uh, the skin is very thin, so what you can do is cut down this. This will lift open the whole uh, breast of the chicken, giving you access to the insides of the chicken. So uh, some people like to run their fingers in there to prevent from puncturing any of the organs. I like to uh, just make sure that I stick as far as I can over to the side and cut it because then you're going to get into the livers. And then I do the other side as well. And so now you have all the connective tissues that you wanna kind of uh, get out in there. And you wanna maybe pull it open like that. So now you can access everything else. You can just 
basically pick this up. And then you'll want to cut the vent out. And this part here is very important not to nick the, uh, the intestines because then it's going to get a little dirty. So you just work your fingers in there, kind of pull everything out. Get your knife in there, cut any of those tissues that are holding it back. And then you got a couple extra tendons in there. Now you basically have a clean chicken inside. You do have to deal with the uh, lungs a little bit um, and then just rinse it out. However, if you want, you can get into this. These are your livers, that's your heart. And if you're ever gonna be uh, eating your livers and stuff like that, make sure you don't hit this green sack here because that'll um, taint the uh, meat or the uh, livers. Uh, because that's its bile. So you can either pull it off or cut into the ribs a little bit and cut that completely off. So there I got one liver there and then I got there. So now all that, that goes into the bin there and I get rid of that. And what you want to do with your organs and everything is toss it in your water, start cooling it down because the meat is still warm right now. You want to cool it down as quick as possible to prevent it from um, um, spoiling. So you'll get your water out again now. Rinse out the chicken. Make sure you rinse it out really well. And then you can just uh, see it's nice clean in there. Uh, you can trim off these fat glands here. Um, but however, I like leaving a little bit of fat on there just to uh, when you're cooking, it helps with the um, uh, flavoring. So if you do have any feathers stuck on the chicken, you can always just cut them off. That's uh, still part of the skin. So you just pull that off, give it to the dogs if you got dogs around and they'll uh, snatch that up in no time. And now once you're done processing the chicken, it goes into the cold water and then for, it'll stay in there for, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes to uh, half an hour and then we'll toss it into the freezer after we bag it up. So make sure you rinse it out with so that there's no blood in there and uh, you're good to go. That's it. Make sure you rinse off your table and you can get started onto the next chicken. Anyways, thanks for joining me to the uh, actual behind the scenes of how you live on a homestead and the things you gotta be uh, doing on the homestead to, uh, to survive. So I'll catch you on the next video.